Tish Ciravolo of Daisy Rock Guitars here at NAMM. And this is a really cool, this Butterflies in Flight is a really cool guitar that she played. Tell me a little bit about it. How long have you guys been had this around? Well, you know, we're Daisy Rock Roll Guitars, and this is our sophomore acoustic, and it's a really beautiful guitar. I don't know if you can kind of see some of the specs, but check this out. We got a butterfly bridge, and then we got butterflies that go up the neck. I mean, nothing says more girl. Right? The butterflies on a guitar. Absolutely. I like butterflies too. I'm a guy. Yeah, oh well. In touch with your femininity. I like that. I like that. Um, tell me a little bit about Daisy Rock. I mean, your philosophy, you've been around, this is your 15th anniversary this year, right? Yes, I don't know if you've seen my cake. You have to come see my cake. Okay. We built in a ginormous 12 foot cake in the booth for our 15 year anniversary. We started Daisy Rock in 2000. Our mission is we're doing whatever it takes to get more girls to learn how to play guitar and enjoy music. That's a big mission in our industry because we're the only girl guitar company. We've been the only girl guitar company for 15 years. So what we're doing is we bring the girl. We're everything for any girl. And I'm talking small, young, four, six, eight-year-old girls, all the way up to the grandmother's club. We're the number one big guitar for all the grandmother's clubs in America. So for any demographic of any girl, all we care about is that it's female. So tell me, when you first started coming to NAMM 15 years ago, uh, as Daisy Rock, what was the environment like then? Oh, it'll never work. That's exactly what everybody said to me. And it, was, it was so funny because every guy would walk by my booth and they'd be like, girls aren't going to go into a music store and buy guitars. And then the girlfriend or the niece or the daughter would be dragging that guy back to my booth going, this is the coolest thing ever. You've got to get one of these guitars in the stores, Dad. And so a thousand times the first weekend I heard the word cute. cute. Oh, my God, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's so cute. No one's ever done it. No one's ever made a peak guitar for a girl. And we designed... A new guitar. You know, I was inducted into the NAMM Museum because we actually designed something different for girls. It's lighter in weight. They have a slower neck profile. Most guitars have a 42 millimeter nut on them. Ours are 40. It's the slight differences that make the guitars easier to play for girls. And is it, it, is it, for is it just easier for a beginner player to pick it up and start immediately playing? Is, it, is, is that the idea of changing the, the size? Because I mean, women have played a few guitars for years. Right. But what makes this different? The whole idea that a girl can play a guitar that's designed for her and then has what you call female accoutrements. I mean, we're making guitars that are pink sparkle and butterflies on the neck. We're making guitars that nobody had ever really thought, like, what speaks to a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 year old girl that goes, you know what, I should play guitar. The idea behind society is every time a mother says, my daughter should take lessons, they go, that are that color, they're, what, what do you think of this? Is this a good thing that you, you started something that's kind of building now and elsewhere? It's flattering. I could get mad and it could be really insulting, but it's not. It's, if the idea is to get more girls to learn how to play guitar, then everybody should try to make a guitar for a girl because then more girls will play guitar. There will be more choices out there. No one's going to reinvent the wheel like I do. That's already happened. But, you know, the first 
like I said, the first man, there was nothing like what I was doing. The second man, there was a sea of pink everywhere. Everybody slapped pink on their guitar and went, it's a girl guitar. Well, it's not a girl guitar. The, the second year? Yeah. The year and this. So, you know, that's okay. That's to me, it's all about empowerment. And if they're going to make something that's going to talk to the girl, that's going to make her play guitar, and it's not a daisy rock, that's okay. So I'm just going to have another girl that's playing. Is there a magic age at which girls start looking at guitars and say, gosh, I want to buy I want to buy a guitar. That's what I want to do. Is, is there a certain age? I always think it's beginners, and that's usually the parents that are paying for it. Because, right. you know, we do these great guitars that are shapes of daisies and hearts and butterflies. We have the beginner acoustics, the junior misses. I, there's something that a girl says, I can put that on, and I can be a rock star. I can right. play rock star just like I play princess, or just like I play whatever I'm playing with my, my tea party that day. Just think the girl can put on a guitar and have that same identity of age four, five, six years old. Right. It's like, then they're a rock star already. It would happen for them. Have you been playing music uh, through, throughout your life? I have. Yeah. Played a lot of bands in the 80s in LA. I was in an all-female band called Lipstick and Heavy Metal. And they were the house band at the Whiskey in 1989. But I'm talking about before that. Were you a young girl who played guitar? Yes, yeah. My Okay, so <laughs> my best friend, Barbara, um, we loved to watch the Hardy Boys oh, yeah. back in the day. Oh, yeah. And her older sister, Anne, played guitar. And we were talking to her one day about, like, how would we ever meet the Hardy Boys? Because we're all in the seventh grade, right? And Anne is like, I don't know. And Anne was really super cool because she played guitar, and all the guys really liked her. So all of a sudden, our brain went, hey, wow, she plays guitar. And, like, all the boys like her looked totally into me, like Parker Stevenson, if we play guitar. That's the mentality that you have. And they always think that guys always say the same thing. Like, I learned how to play guitar to get girls. Not too much for girls. started it all. And then I saw Susie Contro on Happy Days playing bass guitar. She had this like little, little move she did. Yeah. And I was like, okay, whatever that is, I totally want to do that. That's really awesome. And then I was like, and then like Fonz was like, oh, she's super cool. And I was like, and then the Fonz will think I'm cool. Right. So, really deep, right? Pop <laughs> culture. I started playing guitar to get girls. Yeah, see? Okay. Same. And I was like, it's so wonderful to have you fish. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you. It was really nice meeting you. Thanks for having me. I'm Olivia Rocks, and this is my original song called Princess.
We're here at NAMM with Olivia Rocks. And Olivia, you're 16 years old. Right? I am, yeah. Yeah, and, you're, and you, your name is Olivia Rocks. That's almost too good to be true. It's almost too good of a rock and roll name. Where did yeah. you get that name, Olivia? Well, I was in a movie when I was about nine, and um, I did this performance right after the premiere of it. And the screen came up, and it was really cool. And, um, and ever since then, people have just called me Olivia Rocks because that was my character's name. That's so it just, everyone oh, yeah. just, I stuck with it. I might as well, right? right. <laughs> so, yeah. How long have you been playing guitar, Olivia? I've been playing for eight years, which is crazy because it's half of my life, I just realized. So That's I've just, crazy. yeah. And you started out on Daisy Rock, or did you start I out? started on a Taylor, but I think it was a little too hard for an eight-year-old to play because, you know, it's tiny fingers and you have to wrap it around and press down. So my dad got me a Daisy Rock guitar, which is way easier for girls and for younger people, too. To play, which and that just changed my life, and I started building my collection. I think I started with the um, electric, with its heart shaped one. It was so cool, and it just started building from there. And now we have like an entire wall full. What do you have now? What are some of the guitars? Oh my gosh! So I think it was my first acoustic was a pink sparkly one. So that's just like my baby. I call it lovely. You have to name your guitars, of course. Yeah. Um, and then I have actually a couple prototypes, which is pretty cool. I have some like that are that have these um, like roses on it and um, kind of thorns. It's really cool, like this, these black guitars with red thorns. And um, I have I have a lot. <laughs> I have a pink one, and electric, and then I have um, a baby blue electric too. So I just started building. <laughs> have what, and later later in your life, uh, people are going to say you have guitar acquisition syndrome. I yeah. think you're already starting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of us have an acoustic guitar, so yeah. you could possibly, possibly imagine. Olivia, tell us about the song that you just played. You, uh, it's yeah. called Princess. Yes. Um, how did that come about? And, and um, just tell us about the songwriting process. Yeah. Well, I've written over 300 songs, which... 300? Yeah, some people don't believe it because I'm only 16, yeah. But, um, and I just, I don't know, it always just comes to me, and I write it down, and I immediately turn on my voice memos, and, um, but the song you just heard, Princess, that one I wrote about three years ago, maybe four, um, and that one I just got so inspired, I sat, I actually wrote it on piano, that one, um, and it goes, do 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 that's the kind of line underneath it. But I just get so inspired and I just start dreaming about, like, what if I was actually a princess? You know, that's just, and I go from there and it just grows. So you write about things you know? That's, is that... I write about anything. Sometimes I even write about things I don't know because it's like in an effort to know it. Uh -huh. To write about it is to know it, you know? So it's it's almost like you can live it through your songs, through songwriting, and through even listening to songs. So you can so fantasize cool. kind yeah, of through Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you play piano too? Yeah, I so play. You play piano and guitar. What and is your favorite instrument? And you almost said and. And, what and ukulele. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. Which is your favorite? It's definitely between piano and guitar. But it's like so close to call because guitar is so amazing because it's portable. You can bring it anywhere with you. And you can't really bring like a grand piano with you. You can bring a keyboard, but it's not really the same, you know. So maybe leaning towards guitar. But I have I have been playing piano a little bit longer too. So <laughs> that's the correct answer. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when did you hook up with the Daisy Rock people? How did you, how did that happen? And, and, yeah. and, and what do you think about Daisy Rock's product line? Now? Well, first of all, I love Daisy Rock's product line. As you can tell, I have like every single guitar of theirs. <laughs> um, but I think we actually met, my dad introduced us, um, and he was at NAMM. Uh -huh. NAMM, beautiful NAMM. <laughs> and, um, and he gave him her my card, Tish Taravolo, who's the owner and founder of Daisy Rock Guitars. And we connected the next year, which took a little bit of time because I think we just kind of got lost in the shuffle of NAMM. Um, and then we met and we just sort of clicked and we started hanging out and, um, and now we're doing a lot of work together, which is awesome. We're also working closely with Alfred and so it's really, it's just awesome. The whole philosophy, uh, Tisha's whole philosophy there yeah. is to get guitars in the hands of young girls. Yeah. And, and not so young girls necessarily, yeah. but, but get girls playing guitar. Do you think yeah. that that's happening? Do you think that she's succeeding in that? I 
do, I do. And um, I am also trying to get music into schools as well. And I think that it is very inspirational for girls to know that there is a guitar out there that can fit their small hands. Because girls, it's it's true. Like, hold up your hand right here. I do have a smaller hand. Yes. You can see that. Yes. And, um, and it's just natural. That's kind of <laughs> the anatomy of a human. Um, and so most people don't realize that. They just kind of buy the same guitars. Right. And then they get discouraged because maybe they can't play it. Maybe it's too hard to press down. Maybe it even hurts their hands after a while. Um, and so I think that their mission is to try to get girls playing. Because girls can rock too. They can, right. yeah. Sure. And We've seen it happen. Yeah. Today, yeah. right here. Yeah. <laughs> just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I think that their mission is really, it, it is working. Because I got inspired. They, it helped me, right, so right. I think that's cool. So who um, artists out there who've made it, uh, who, who's your biggest inspiration out there? Oh, I mean, I love Billie Holiday. I have to just say her first because just a legend. I can't even believe it. But um, I really do like Bruno Mars. I think he's really cool. As far as current, he's like really, really awesome. And I just love the way that he um, he uses all of his songs in so different, so many different ways, and um, it's, I think he really puts a lot of messages into his songs. And some people don't maybe hear the first listen, but if you go back and you listen to the tracks, and you can hear all these different things every time you listen to it, and that's what I love about a song. It's like when you can hear different things, you can hear the messages, you can hear the, maybe a little guitar part that you didn't hear the first time, and I just yeah. So I'd say Bruno Mars. <laughs> So Olivia, you're recording an album right yeah, now. You're yeah. getting ready to go into the studio. Yeah. Uh, is Princess going to be on there? I think so. I think we're going to get that on the album. So Princess and maybe, what, 10 or 11 of the other 300 that you're Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might have to do a couple bonus tracks so I can get some more on there. <laughs> yeah. Olivia, it's wonderful having you. Thanks so much. It's lovely being here. Thank you so much.